Alrighty, as it is at the top of the hour, I do want to be respectful of everyone's time. So we are going to go ahead and get started tonight for this afternoon, depending on where you are. But thank you so much for joining us um, for our All About Rubrics webinar. Like I said a couple of times, if you have not gotten signed into your Formative account yet, you can go to formative.com, click the login button, and then choose the option that is associated with your account whether it's one of these single sign-on options or a username and password. While you're getting signed in, let me just introduce myself. My name is Katie Rush and I'm a client success manager here at Formative. I am a former teacher. I taught fifth grade for about seven years. And in addition to my general education background, I do have a background in special education as well. And in my free time, I like to cook, crochet, and I play on a softball team. A few things just to help you um, we're gonna go over these couple of things here real quick. First, we are recording this session um, to be posted on our training center later on. So if you'd ever like to go back and take a look at this later, it will be hosted on our training center within about a week. So you can definitely check it out there. We are gonna go for about 30 minutes today and there will be plenty of time for um, questions and uh, question and answer at the end. But I also have the chat up here for you. I also have a few other of my colleagues in this webinar with me. So feel free to drop your questions in the chat or the QA section and we'll answer them as we go. We're gonna cover four big pieces tonight um, all about our new rubric feature. We're gonna go over where you can find it, how to create one, how to use a save rubric, and yes, there is a trick for that, and how to grade using a rubric. And this is where you're going to get to take a formative as a student and we'll go over some grading components with that as well. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. When we talk about our rubric um, attachment or a rubric feature on our question types, we have four question types now that you have the ability as a teacher to add a rubric to. And those are our audio response question, our free response question, our show your work and video response question. These four question types now have the opportunity for you to add a rubric. Currently, it is only these four question types, and the rest of these can be auto graded with the um, with the answer keys that you put in as well. Okay. So now that we covered the question types, let's go ahead and jump into formative here. So I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to start by creating a new formative on my dashboard. And I'm gonna go ahead and title this rubrics. And from here, I'm going to choose a free response question. So that's one of the question types that we can work with. And you'll notice now at the bottom of this question modal, you'll see this toggle of use rubric. And when we toggle this on, I now have a clickable option to add a rubric. When I click on this, it takes me to this window. All of these options are clickable for you. And so you can customize any pieces here that you need to. First and foremost, I'm gonna title my rubric here as a creative writing rubric. If there was more specific, I needed to add more detail about which type of creative writing this rubric was about, I can add that here if I need to. If it's a, for a specific grade level, class, whatever, I can add those pieces here. The next step is to add your criterion. So these are your big headers on your rubrics. These are the big sections that your students are gonna be assessed on. I can add more by clicking on this plus sign here. And I can add as many or as few as I'd like. If I added too many, I can come over here to this triple dots and hit remove. So this is plenty customizable for as many uh, sections to your rubric as you need. And you can click here to title them whatever you need to.
Now you'll notice there's also a space for a description down here. I'm not going to put one in this one, but feel free to add more information and more detailed information underneath this grammar section, okay? Or underneath any of your criterion section. Once you've established your sections for your rubric, you can then expand out to your levels. So this is really where your students are going to be scoring within the rubric. So are they a level one, two, or three, or four on your rubric, depending on what you're assessing with this criterion? In this case, I'm gonna keep it really simple and just title these one, two, and three. If I was creating this for an actual classroom, I would involve, I would have a lot more description here describing what's involved at each of these levels. And you'll also notice I can control these points. So let's say that you have a three tier rubric, but you also wanna leave space for a zero within that rubric. So I'm gonna redo all of these points. and add a no submission section here. This now accounts for the fact that I can give students zero points if they didn't submit anything. Having this extra level can save you some headache right now of switching back and forth between one point or zero points, or if you'd like to change any of these at any point in time when you're grading, having this zero points in your rubric definitely helps make that a little easier, okay? You can build out the other criterion the same way by adding in the levels you need. So again, I'm gonna title this no submission. Change these all to zero and change my point levels as I go here. Oops, not 21 points, just one. <laughs> And so now in just a couple of minutes, I've created a very basic rubric that I can now assess students on. When I've built this out to my satisfaction, I'm going to click this blue check mark to close out of the editing piece. You'll notice my title here matches what I put on my rubric. And now I can type my question to my students. And now it's ready to go. One of the things I wanna point out to you is here, your point value adjusts depending on your rubric. So here, oops, that's why that's 16 points <laughs> because it had 10 there. So if I close out of this, my rubric is worth nine points maximum and the point value for the question adjusted based on what I have in my rubric. So you'll never have to adjust the question point value if you have a rubric there, it will automatically adjust based on what you have in your rubric, right? Um, you do wanna make sure, like I said, that you name it just so that it makes it easy for you to find and understand what you're assessing on. So the process I just showed you here was how to create a rubric from scratch. So the first time that you go to create a rubric, this is gonna be the way that you have to build them, okay? Once you have them built, what you can do is you can actually pull in from other assignments. So what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna click on this little plus sign here and I'm gonna to go to search from existing questions. And this is a great tip if you haven't found this yet, you can actually search from your own formatives. So these are not formatives that I have um, posted to the library, I have not published these. These are just my formatives in my account. So you don't have to always publish your formatives to continue to pull from them, but this is great if you have things in your account that you wanna reuse. Now I have a formative here called rubric bank. And you'll notice I've titled my questions or in the question space, I've titled the rubric that's attached to them. And so in this case, I'm gonna pull my math rubric into my formative. And all I have to do to do that 
is click this add button. And you'll see it says here that it was successfully added to my formative. So when I close out of this window, you'll see I added a show your work question to this formative and it added the rubric that was already attached to it. So if you have rubrics that you use all the time, I would highly suggest creating a formative like I had called rubric bank and add your rubrics to that formative. Because what you can do is you can create essentially a rubric bank that you can pull from easily so that when you're actually creating formatives on a regular basis, you don't have to always build the rubrics from scratch, right? So with this show your work question, all I'd have to do is delete what I have typed there. Retype my question the way I want it to be. And I'm ready to go. And this rubric is already attached. My point value is already attached. It's a show your work question that's ready to go for my students. So having that bank of pre-prepared rubrics, while it may be a little bit of work up front, will end up saving you so much time in the long run as you're building these formatives in the piece, like in the moment as you're trying to build them to send out to students, all right? Any questions about building a rubric from scratch or pulling a rubric from a pre-made formative or question? I just wanna make sure we've covered that before we kind of switch gears and you get to take on the student seat here. All right, it looks like we're good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop a link in the chat for you. And I'd like you to please click on it and take it. It's one question um, just to show you what it looks like as a student. So go ahead and take that formative. I'm gonna pull it up here on my screen. You can also use this guest code, um, QU5MYU. I'll drop that in the chat as well for us. If you're in your account and you wanna just add it to your quick code box in the top right-hand corner, you can do that as well. So there's just one question and it's really just for us to be able to practice with the grading tool here. So please go ahead, answer the question, fill in some background, fill in some math work there. Um, and we will come back together and I'll show you the view responses here in just a second. I'm gonna hide names and we can watch the responses come in in real time. Awesome, I'm starting to see some check marks comes in, come in that shows me that we're just about finished. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop back over to the student view here, which you can always find with this eyeball. If you look right underneath the question, you'll see the point value for this question and you'll see rubric. And when I click on this, it brings up the entire rubric here. So as a student, if I'm working through a, an essay problem or a math problem or something with a rubric, I can always see exactly where my rubric is just by clicking on the little link underneath the question type or underneath the question number here. All right, so your students always have access to the rubrics once they're pushed out and once they're attached to questions. So they can check in with the rubric whenever they're working on a question or if they're unsure about how they're gonna be assessed, they always have access to it here. So no more printing out paper rubrics to hand out to students. You can have it just attached to the question and ready to go, okay? So I did wanna show you that that's where your students can find that. But let's go take a look at the view responses. So in my view responses tab, I'm now looking at student work here, okay? And so what I can do is I can click on the student's work and you'll see the rubric shows up in a modified version in a very simplified version above my student's answer. So in one space, I can see the work my student did and their answer and the rubric. As I hover over each one of these, 
you'll also notice the point value shows up at the bottom of the dialog box and the description shows up as well. And so I can click and I'm, I'm just clicking to show you where the student's responses would fall in that rubric. I can also adjust as I need to if I'm going through and see different parts of their answers that fit different parts of the rubric, I can make those adjustments as needed. But again, this is where that zero points comes into play because you can just click around and score appropriately. Okay. You'll notice the color coding is changing here as well as we're moving around the rubric. So if I toggle this all the way up to full credit, my student now shows green here and I can toggle this down as well. And it will, sh it will adjust accordingly. Okay. So you can actually adjust this for multiple students. So that's a great question. So if you have students that you wanna grade the same way on the rubric or you've scanned through and you know exactly who's gonna be graded the same way, you can click on multiple students and grade them on the rubric at the same time. So you still have that batch grading feature here to be able to select more than one student and give them the same grade. So it, does, it doesn't necessarily impact the amount of time that it takes you to grade everything because you can still do those batches. All right. And again, you'll still see, you can click into individual students' responses here, just like you can when you're batch grading anything else. So if you want to dive into an individual student and give them feedback on top of their show their work here, you always have that option um, with the rubric. Okay. So those are the big topics I wanted to make sure we cover tonight with rubrics. Um, I am going to be giving you a clone code for my rubric bank that I showed you that I pulled these two rubrics from. And so while they're not super complete rubrics that are necessarily gonna be a great match for what you have, um, what you will have is a starting point. All right, so I'm gonna grab this clone code for you and drop it in the chat. And now you'll have a formative in your account that's already titled rubric bank. So as you're moving through, building more rubrics and starting to use this functionality in more spaces for your students, you can create those blank questions like I had in that formative I just gave you and add your rubrics to those. Because at that point, you'll just be able to pull and use in a very simple process without having to recreate it in the moment, okay? So I encourage you to take that um, and please go ahead and use it, add to it. That is your copy. You won't be ruining it for anybody else. Um, so please use it and enjoy. As always, if you need more assistance or are looking for more resources, this little question mark is a great place to start. Our Help Center has fantastic articles that are meant to be short, sweet, and to the point and ready for you to use to answer our frequently asked questions. Our training center where you signed up for this webinar um, is a great place to land as well. Remember, we will be posting our recording of this webinar here in our previous webinars section. Um, and if you haven't checked out our, our previous webinars recently, we have been uploading some new ones up there. So definitely take a peek. Our November webinars will be coming soon, but I promise there's some great uh, topics that are gonna be coming up. So be sure to check back at the beginning of November to check out those offerings as well. We have a few minutes left and I wanna make sure that everybody has questions that are answered. Um, so now is a great time to try to build a rubric if you haven't done that already, um, to try and see if there's any questions that come up as you're building and that we can handle those right here with you and troubleshoot in real time if you have any. So um, if you don't have any questions, um, I do have a survey link that I would appreciate you filling in um, if you don't mind. And if you fill in the survey, uh, we will send you a certificate of attendance for this uh, webinar. So please feel free to fill that in if you are interested in getting a certificate of attendance for this webinar. 
Let me just shorten this URL. Drop that in the chat. And there is the survey link. So feel free to click on that and fill that in for us and let us know um, how we did with this webinar and any other feedback you may have for us. I will stay on for a few more minutes if there's any more questions, but otherwise I appreciate your attendance and your attention. And I hope this was helpful in learning how to use webinar or learning how to use rubrics. <laughs>